Oh, hello. So this week is the anniversary, the yard side of Jane's death, and I um, want to spend a little bit of time just remembering her. It's been 20 years now since we lost her, and um, there's probably not a day that goes by that she's not in my mind, my body, my Tai Chi practice. Um, she was a very, very talented and wonderful teacher as well as person. Um, and it's a real honor to um, have in, be an inheritor of her school and her teaching. One of the great things of the many great things about Jane um, as a teacher is that she was always uh, positioning herself as a fellow student who might just be a little further up the path and um, could kind of point, go this way, don't go that way. Um, but she never put herself out as a master or um, someone who couldn't make mistakes, who couldn't learn from her mistakes. Um, there were times where you know she'd you'd be pushing hands with her and she'd give you a push. You'd fly into the air, both feet off the ground, slam into the wall, and then she'd say, "Ah, that was a shitty push. My I got, my hands got hard at the end. That was no good. Let me try again." You know, so she never just looked for results. She was really um, trying to be very honest about what was happening for herself in her Tai Chi practice, and that gives us a lot of um, freedom to also not pretend that we're masters or that we've already achieved um, some level of greatness and we're just you know, here dispensing it to you. We're working with you. We're looking at ourselves, at what we're practicing, and always trying to live up to her standards of being honest about what we can do, what we can't do, and trying to keep furthering ourselves down that path. So um, of all the many things I have to thank her for, that's definitely one of them. And um, so let's dedicate this week's classes to the beloved memory of Jane. So let's start with a form. Let's just do a first third, and then we'll do some standing. Jane used to give us a five minute standing practice where she would talk us through our bodies. So I will do that and then we'll do another first third. So let's get started. And begin.
as I keep standing here. Go ahead and fix your footing, your stance if you want. Get yourself into a comfortable position. And go ahead and let your arms down, because if you hold them in that opening position, you might be creating extra tension. So let the hands go, let the arms go. And breathe and relax. Bring your attention to your Dantian. And connect from the Dantian up to your shoulders. Relaxing the shoulders. And then back to your Dantian and out to the elbows. And now, from the Dantian, out to your wrists. Don't jump ahead to your hands, just go to the wrists. Back to the Dantian, and out to your hands, all the way to the fingertips. And back to the Dantian. And feeling your hips. Feeling all around the hip joint, trying to relax. And into the Dantian and out to your knees. Unlocking your knees, releasing tension around your knees. Back to the Dantian and feeling your ankles. Relaxing, letting the weight drop through your ankles. And all the way down from the Dantian, down through your legs to your feet, feeling the open channel down to the ground through the bubbling wells, relaxing your feet. And back to the Dantian. And feeling the base of your spine, letting the sacrum and the base of your spine, relax. Into the Dantian and out to the Jiaji point between your shoulder blades. Releasing any tension in your shoulders, across your back, and into that open place between your shoulders. And done. 
Dantian up to the jade pillow in the back of your neck, the base of your skull sits in the jade pillow at the top of your spine. Relaxing tension in the jade pillow. Letting your head rest naturally. And Dantian, and feeling up to the top of your head, the rear crown, the place where you hang from above, feeling that open to the heavens. And Dantian, and feeling all the way out, top of the head, hearts of your palms, bubbling wells, fully open and relaxing. Letting each in-breath fill the whole body. And each out-breath also returns you to the Dantian. Breathing. Relaxing. Feel back down into your feet, releasing into the ground, and rest your legs. Let's do another first third. Again.
want to say a couple more things about Jane, and then I'll pass things over to Lee. Um, as with many of the really talented Taiji people we've worked with, Jane was talented in more than just being a Taiji practitioner. She was a very talented teacher, which not everybody who's good at doing Taiji is actually good at teaching it. And she was actually a really very skilled and gifted teacher. She was also an artist and um, a loved to sing. There were times that we'd show up at their house for push hands and she'd be at the piano with her two daughters and they'd all be singing together. And so it's really no surprise that her younger daughter, Wendy, became a professional musician. Um, look her up, Wendy Wu. She's great. And um, th there was just a, a lot of nice life in their house. You know, when we would go there for push hands, it wasn't just um, about pushing hands, although of course it was, but you were at their house, you had their dog, you had their kids, and just the liveliness of what was going on. She did a lot of um, beautiful paintings, and so that's one of them. Um, we have some of them, we'll show them to you at the end of this class. And, um, you know, she just really had a lot of uh, talent to share with the world. And I'm glad that things like painting and Tai Chi and her music could continue to live on, even though we don't have her anymore. So I'll pass this over to Lee now. So the main thing that Jane would work on was movement. You know, how do we get from one posture to another? What are the various connecting motions and gestures that we make to do that? So I want to do another first third, and let's do it at a slightly faster clip. Um, after standing, I find that I often do a form pretty slowly, and that last one was much more baton pace than Jane pace. So let's do another first third, and just keep flowing through it, and uh, then we'll do some more from there. Throwing open all the joints of the body so that the weight can drop through them down towards the ground. Breathing and relaxing. And go.
So the beauty of moving, the beauty of doing the Tai Chi form is that we're moving. Stillness in motion, a moving meditation. Um, the danger is that it becomes rote motions that you do from the outside. You know your hand is supposed to go someplace and so you put it there and there was no rhyme or reason. There was nothing that happened on the inside to make that motion in the hand happen. Your awareness can get all stuck out in the hands and the feet and so you end up stepping, moving your foot rather than having changes happen inside that result in the foot moving. You end up doing changes in the arms that just move the arms. Um, and so the great thing about going slow is it can give you a chance to actually see that you're changing something on the inside in order to affect the change on the outside rather than just running through a whole set of motions that you've learned on the outside. Mm -hmm. But going slow can also become a real crutch where you're so paying attention to the inside. There's so much process happening on the inside. It's all about how you feel on the inside. And you forget about the world. You don't engage with the world. Your changes aren't at the appropriate time based on what's happening around you. Um, and of course, you know, Tai Chi Chuan is a martial art. As a martial art, you don't get to pick the pace and you don't get to say, sorry, you don't get to punch me in the face yet because I haven't managed to gather my chi and sink it and arrange my separation of yin and yang. Um, you have to be there to be able to respond to what's happening around you. Um, but the challenge then is to continue doing Tai Chi. So let's do another first third about that same pace and I want you to actually keep integrated inside to outside rather than letting yourself get caught in the motions of the hands and feet as you run through it. So again, breathing and relaxing. Letting the entire body be open. All of the joints have space inside them. And that lets the weight sink through the joints towards the ground. Mind in Dantian. Inner and outer mutually harmonize. And go ahead.
So one of the things that um, makes the inner and the outer mutually harmonize, makes the changes that are happening on, happening on the inside actually connect to the outside, is turn the waist. And so when the hands are moving arbitrarily, usually the waist isn't involved. And so I want to look at a couple places in the form where it's possible that you stop having waist turn. Um, and then we'll do another first third, trying to keep that going. And then we'll change gears and uh, work on some of the other stuff Jane used to do with us. Um, so one of the places is going from white crane into brush knee. Uh, you know, you're turning here and the arms are dropping, the hands are folding, you're stepping and you're going into brush knee. And so as you're doing that, the waist needs to be involved all the way there. As my arms are dropping and I'm turning, this is about how far I get to one gesture. And my waist has not turned all the way because if I have turned all the way, then I'm just gonna move the hands and the foot. So I need to keep the waist engaged all the way here as the hands fold and the foot steps. And then look here, my waist is still to the corner so that I've got a real clear turn of the waist to finish the move. As opposed to dropping the hand and now all of this happening without the waist turning, coming back to the front and then just shifting again without the waist turning. So let's try that a couple times. Um, I'll face the camera, Beth will face the standard direction. And what I really want you to do is to pay attention to the waist turning all the way through there. So go ahead, the hands drop, you're turning the waist. Now keep turning the waist as the left hand drops, the right hand folds, the left foot steps. Make sure the waist is still in the corner. And as you shift and turn to complete the posture. Again, back to white crane. Drop the hands, turn the waist, continue turning to the right as the left hand drops. And then as the left right hand folds, you start to come back towards the front corner. As you shift, you still have turn to finish the move. Once more, turning the waist. Hands drop, keep turning the waist. Make sure there's some at the end. Okay, and now let's make the mistake once. So um, we'll stop along the way here from White Crane. Drop the hands, let the left hand swing up and turn all the way that you can here, as far to the right as you can. So then your two choices are to turn back to the front to turn the hands over or to just move the hands and step. And then shift and whether or not you've got turn at the end, I wasn't, didn't manage to screw up and get back to the front, so I actually had turn left at the end. So let's do this again. Um, drop the hands, turn as far as you can, and now as you come back towards the front, turn your waist, which will bring you back to the front. Shift, and notice how the last bit is just moving your hands. So those are two mistakes that you can make. One of them is that as the hands drop, you've turned all the way, and so you just move the hands in the foot. And the other is that as the hands drop, you've turned all the way. So when you fold the hands and move the foot, you come back to the front. And now I'm already faced to the front. Um, so what you need to make sure you're doing is that you work with the waist turn so that there's still more to get the hands to turn over. So the hands drop. When I get to here, my waist has not turned all the way that it can. So I've still got more to turn to the right in the process of getting the hands to fold over. And when I step, my waist is still to the corner so that I've got more to turn back to the front. So let's do it another couple times to trying to do your very best to keep the waist turning. White crane, and go. Waist turning, 
Waist continues to turn in the front corner. Turn at the end of the move. Again. And once more, waist turns all the way through this. And to get this to work, you have to have good timing. I mean, partly it happens because the motion on the outside is a result of what happens on the inside. But along the way there, you need to really manage the timing. So we saw what happened when you've used all of the turn. When I drop and I turn, and I've turned as far to the right as I can, um, I don't have any choice. I have to do something that's going to get me in trouble for the next move. And that's a timing problem. I didn't manage to work the timing of the waist and the arms so that when I got to this point, I can still turn further and then come back. Um, and so Professor Chung named his school in Taiwan and then in New York, Shi Zhong, um, Shi Zhong, uh, which means we, we were always taught it as meaning right timing. Um, so that uh, as you get the timing right, then your positions and your moves are, work out well. Literally, it means time's center or in the heart of the moment. So Professor Chung's school was all about being right there, exactly in the center of the moment. And that's what I think gives us right timing. And this turning the waist and being able to continue moving as you go through the form so that you don't end up with the waist static and the arms just going has an awful lot to do with getting authentic movement, getting real movement. So another place that uh, we can mess this up is going into the punch. So we're sitting here in brush knee and I come forward and step. As you shift, you need to make sure the waist is still left of center so that the waist can turn all the way from left corner to right corner as you come across, get the punch ready, strike with the uh, left hand. And then as you punch, the waist needs to square to the front at the end. And so things that happen here are that when uh, people step and shift, they're already here. See how my waist is already to the front? And then I'm just gonna move my hands. And see, my waist is still to the front. And then when I punch, there's no waist turn. So, you know, doing this. Um, at this point, I'm already to the front. I just move my hands and my foot. I'm still already to the front. I just move my hands. Versus as you step and get ready, my waist is to the left corner and then it turns left corner to right corner. My waist is in the right corner. So I have turn to finish the punch. So let's do that a couple times. Right, wrong, right. Um, so from brush knee, second brush knee, sit back, waist opens to the left, shift forward, gently squeezing a fist, right foot comes in and out, shift, and now make sure your waist is left of center so that as you turn and step, the waist ends up right of center. And then punch with turn at the very end to deliver the punch. Back to brush knee. Sit back, left. Step and shift left of center. Turn from left corner to right, punch squaring at the end. Once more, doing your best. Go ahead. Let's make the mistake. Brush knee, sit back, shift forward, squeezing a fist. Step, when you step, let the natural thing happen where your waist is right square. 
And now, just move your hands and your foot. The waist is still square. And now, punch all with the arms. All right, so you see, the waist didn't move much there. Let's do that again. Sit back. Step, waist square to the front. Shift, moving the hands and foot without the waist. Punch without the waist. Turning the waist. Brush knee. Sit back. Gently squeeze a fist. Right foot swings in and out. Shift, waist is left of center. Turn the waist, move the hands and foot. Waist is right of center. Punch squaring at the end. So that's a lot different. That's a lot different. And that'll keep it alive all the way through. So let's, um, let's do another first third. Turn the waist, keep it alive, moving. Throwing open the joints of the body so that the weight can drop through them. Breathing and relaxing. And go. Keep the waist lively. Waist turns all the way through here. Every motion. Waist is turning. Even here as you go into shouldering. And we just practiced this. Left of center, right of center, square at the end, turn more, turn, turn, turn. Now the other big practice, the flip side, the yin to the yang of movement, is standing and holding postures. Um, and Jane would always say, I hate holding postures. I just hate it. Um, we all hate holding postures. It's uncomfortable and difficult and emotionally challenging. Um, she loved the movement. She hated holding postures. Of course, as Beth did, um, she was the one who would walk us through standing. Um, in the opening position. And I think she thought of that more as meditation than that grinding, 
grueling holding postures. And so we're going to hold some postures for her. Um, we, for a year or so, um, uh, Jane and Baton invited the two of us to come over to their house first thing in the morning. And so we'd show up about seven in the morning um, and practice Tai Chi for an hour or so. And they'd come out during some or all of that and practice with us. Um, and uh, I distinctly remember spending time there with Jane, with the two of us holding play guitar or lift hands um, way longer than either of us wanted to do it. Um, you know, hating holding postures, but um, Jane was stubborn and she certainly wasn't going to let a little punk like me outstand her there. So we would stand there at, you know, 7 and 30 in the morning and just like, I am not moving, I am not moving, I am not moving. And Jane's thinking, Jesus, why did I tell this guy to come over in the morning so I end up having to do this before I've even had my coffee or anything? This is horrible. Um, uh, it was actually really cool that we got to do that for a good length of time. No. I would get to work after that and feel like I could barely walk. So let's do a little posture holding. And the thing about posture holding is that it is not mindless grinding, pushing through, gritting your teeth, having determination, um, not standing up no matter what. Instead, posture holding is a chance for you to really fill your whole body, find places that are tight, and release them. So posture holding is very much like work. You want to get the postures externally correct, and then you want to pay attention to everything inside. And as you hold it, your muscles are going to become tired, and they're going to say to you, why don't you take a break? In Baton's words, let's go shopping. Um, and so that's an opportunity for you to Stay in the moment, relax and let go, and let that keep happening. So we'll take it from the top and uh, we'll see how far we get. Um, I'll face the camera, Beth will face the direction you're probably facing. And uh, we'll, just, we'll just work through some of it. So right away, rear crown of the head suspended. The joints of the body are open so that sinking can happen through them. Doesn't mean you go down, down, down. It means you let go and feel a sinking that runs through you. Feet are soft on the ground. And go ahead. Shift. And continue to the opening position. Now we spent some time here already. So quickly feel your whole body. Feel from the Dantian radiating out through the shoulders, elbows, wrists, palms, and fingers. Dantian connected out through the arms. Dantian radiating down. From the Dantian through the hips, elbows, and knees, ankles, bubbling wells, and soft toes. Radiating up, Dantian through base of spine, Jiaji, Jade Pillow, void space above. Filling the whole body. Opening move. And continue to ward off left. Check your shape, 
Good 70-30, front foot pointed straight ahead, rear foot at an angle, waist square, so the left claw is creased, the right is open. Left arm rounded, heart of the palm right in front of your center line. All five fingers visible from the front, thumb not a collapse. One line, middle finger down through forearm. Right hand in front of your hip. There's vertical space between the right hand and the left hand. Don't angle the right hand in so far that there isn't. Resting on the head of the small child. And relax the whole body. Throwing open the joints of the body so that sinking can happen through them. Breathing and relaxing. When you want to stand up, let yourself sink down. a meditation, letting the tension melt off of you. Without standing up, continue to ward off right. Again, check your posture, make sure the front foot's pointed straight ahead, rear foot's at an angle, waist is square, right claw creased, left open. Right hand, center of palm in front of your center line. Elbow sinks, all five fingers going roughly the same direction. Left palm between body and right. Eyes watch in front. Whole body relaxing. When you want to stand up, sit down. Continuing to let go. Very active. Filling the whole body. Continue to roll back. Waist is right of center. Left finger, ring finger, as if touching the side of the right elbow. Right arm is extended, not collapsed. Try to really have all your weight in the back. Releasing the right leg, let it just hang.
scanning the body, finding tension, letting it go. Continue on to press. Release down into the ground. Breathing and relaxing. Make sure you're not leaning on yourself with the two hands. Touching like butterfly wings. Letting go. Check the pressure out between your hands. Don't let it build up. push, sitting back, hands separate, shifting forward as if your fingers were hanging off a closed line, elbows weighted, palms open to the front, not down, beautiful lady's hand, waist square, Breathing and relaxing. Letting the struggle melt off of you. Continuing to relax. And a single whip. Check your posture, front foot straight ahead, rear foot at a corner, waist square, left wrist in front of left shoulder, not over to the side, left elbow dangles. All five fingers come together, all four fingers touch the thumb. We'll take a break after this one. 
Letting go. Breathing and relaxing. Whole body is open. So the sinking can go through the body. Continue letting go. Releasing into the ground. And take a break. And now you can say, along with Jane, I hate holding postures. But yeah, we'll do another first third. But you got to say, it feels pretty good afterwards. So let's do another first third, reap the benefits, and uh, then we'll call it a session. And go ahead. Standing here a moment, letting any tension, effort, striving melt off of you. Feel your Dantian. 
Feel your head top connected to heaven. Feel your feet on the ground. And close. So thank you to Jane. Thank you to everybody who taught us. Thank you to all of you for practicing along.